Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and in today's video we're going to be having a look at the history API in JavaScript. Okay, so um, this one right here, um, essentially it's going to allow you to do two main things. Okay, so um, the first thing or the first topic is going to be history navigation. So essentially uh, you can go back and forward throughout your physical history using JavaScript. Okay, so um, that is the first topic and the second topic and probably the more important topic is going to be history manipulation with the push state method. Okay, so uh, this second topic here um, is going to be primarily used um, to create single page applications and typically when someone says history API, they're referring to the second part here of push state and of course creating a single page application. Okay, so let's have a look at these two topics in today's video. The first one is going to be history navigation. Okay, so um, like I said earlier, you can use JavaScript to navigate through your history, but I first want to demonstrate um, you know, the ability to find out how many entries you have in your history using this API. So right here we can see I've got the current page open. Now, um, in my history here we can see I've got one uh, item inside my history to go back to, therefore I've got a total of two history items. If I was to go inside the console here, then type out history dot length. Okay, so this history right here is the global history object. And if I say history dot length, we can see we get two right there. If I was to go on to page number one here, just like this, then go back to the home page, we can see now, of course, we get a few more entries right here. And now we can see we get a total of, uh, of um, four right there. Now, if I was to go back one step, we still have four because of course this time we have two in behind this one right here and then one forward which gives us four history entries okay so what about actually navigating through the history using javascript so to achieve this we can simply call history dot uh, back for example and this right here is going to be a method so if i press enter we can see we now go back one step we can do the exact same thing uh, for the dot forward method right here, and it works the same way. We now go forward. Um, the last one here to talk about is going to be the go method. So I might just go forward once again, and now we have essentially uh, these three to go back to. So let's go back two spaces. Okay, so we're going to say uh, history dot go and then pass through here negative two. So now we're going to go back two spaces. Um, as we just saw, uh, the actual page here didn't change because um, our two spaces was actually the home page. So we can see here that, that we actually went back those two spaces. And of course, if we go forward, we get those two entries right there. The same thing works if you were to go forward. We can now, for example, say go and then one. And that is the equivalent of going forward one time. And of course, we get that right there. If you pass through zero or you pass through nothing, you simply refresh the current page. So um, that is the first uh, topic to cover, um, the actual history navigation. Okay. So to now demonstrate uh, the second part of today's video, um, uh, history manipulation, um, for this one I've actually gone ahead and I have started a new browsing session. So we can see here my history is empty and I've also removed uh, my second page one from down here. So uh, the reason for that removal is because uh, with the push state method and the history manipulation, um, this is primarily geared towards single page applications. Therefore, this index page right here is my single page in my single page application. Okay, so hope that makes sense. Um, we don't actually need extra pages to you know demonstrate and use the push state method. So what does the push state method do? Essentially, it is going to allow you to add entries to your history. Okay, but these entries won't actually refresh the page. Okay, so the user never actually gets a page refresh as they use your application. And of course, that is the idea of a single page application. So for example, let's go inside here. We're going to be saying history dot push state just like this. And this one is going to take three arguments. Okay, so uh, the first one here, we're going to uh, keep this as null just for now. We're going to come back to that later on. And the second one is going to be the title. So this one right here, this isn't actually used by many of the modern browsers. Um, so in most cases, you can probably just leave this as null. Um, 
Unless, of course, the browsers actually start supporting this feature, then of course, just update your code. But as of 2020, um, you should be okay to just put null as the second argument here. And the last one is going to be the actual URL to go to. Okay, so in this case right here, let's say we want to take the user to the about page. Okay, so we can say about just like that. So now pressing enter here, we can see we now go to the about uh, root right up here. So about has been added to the URL bar, but there wasn't actually a page refresh. Okay, so that is the idea right there. You actually have these defined URLs, but they don't actually, you know, do a page refresh when going back and forth between them. Now, also in my history stack, we can see here, we now get a total of three entries. We can actually go back to the home page, then back forward to the about page with, of course, no refresh. Okay, now you might be thinking, uh, what is the point of doing this? Well, if you had a single page application, and for example, um, when the user clicks on the about link, um, instead of taking them to the about page, you may want to instead push your state right here. And in this case, of course, they're going to see about in the URL bar, but also upon clicking on the link, you're then going to load in the data for the about page. So that could be either through an Ajax request or a fetch request, um, or even just loading the data through the JavaScript itself. So essentially right here, when I did push state about, I now should have actually included right down here, contents for the about page. So let's actually do that right now for a quick demonstration. So let's go inside the text editor right here and make a new function called load about. So like I said previously, this right here would actually be running if the user clicked on some sort of about link on the web page. So inside here, we can just say, for example, document.body.append. We can add, for example, I am the about contents just like that. So just a quick example, obviously this right here is going to be um, done a lot better and you will actually have contents here for the about page, but let's just save this and then let's go back to the main page right here. And then we can just simply call the load about uh, function. So we press enter right here. And of course we get, I'm the about contents. Now, as we can see, the URL has not changed. Okay, so the URL remains the exact same. So this means if I want to send this link right here to, um, you know, uh, someone else, um, they will actually get this in their browser. They won't see the about contents when I link them this URL, okay? Um, now, the advantage that the uh, the push stay method has is that you can of course add the about to URL. So let's go back inside here and we can go and we can say history dot push state. We can pass through here null, null, then say about. Let's save this and refresh. Um, and now um, if I was to load the about page, we can see now we actually get about in the URL. So now I can link this to a friend and they can of course view the content for about. Okay, so that is the key advantage right there. But unfortunately, in my case, if I was to copy this URL and then go to the URL, um, we actually get this right here. So the reason for this is because um, I am not redirecting every single, sorry, um, every single URL to go to my index page. Okay, so you need to actually configure your server so that when the user clicks on a link for the first time, um, it actually redirects back to the index HTML, uh, this one right here. That is easily done in Express uh, for Node.js or um, almost, I'm pretty confident that pretty much any any web server is going to allow you to achieve this. Okay, so I'm not going to be covering that in today's video because it is simply too much to cover um, for a quick sort of tutorial, but I am going to be doing a whole video on creating a single page application with um, Express.js and of course the history API. So be sure to check that one out. But um, this is just for demonstration, of course, when you actually go to this URL, as long as your URL links back to your index page and this page loads, um, you should then simply check the URL and see if it contains about. 
If it is the about root, then you should simply load the contents right here. Okay, so um, that is essentially the advantage of using um, the push states method. Okay, now um, let's let's cover um, uh, the events called pop states. Okay, so we have push state right here. We've also got pop states as an event. Okay, so let's go inside the text editor and we're going to be adding all. Let's actually just remove this one right here and replace it with window dot add event listener. We're going to listen for the pop state event. Okay, so this one right here. This is going to fire off whenever the user navigates through the application using the back and forward buttons. Okay, so inside here we can say E, grab the event object, then we can simply just console.log and then pass through here E. Okay, so now saving this and then let's actually start a new session. So I'll just copy this URL, then go to this one right here. So we're starting fresh with a clean um, history stack right here. Um, so now Let's go ahead now and we're going to say uh, history dot push state. Let's push the about URL right there. Press enter and of course we go to about. Now what happens when I go back a, um, a page? Okay, so doing this we can see we get the pop state event. That event has fired off and inside here we get all of these uh, properties. Okay, so that is the pop state event. You can use this event to essentially then, you know, once uh, once this event fires off, you can check the URL and see where it has to go. And then of course, load your content based off that. And like I said earlier, all of this comes down to creating a single page application. Okay, now what if I was to go forward to the about page? We can see now we get the exact same effect. Now, I wanna also demonstrate that of course, when you actually push state, so if I was to now go to, for example, um, the contact page, uh, when you push state, it does not fire off the pop state event. It is only when the user, you know, navigates through the history um, just like that. Okay, so um, it's also not going to fire off when you refresh the page. So if I was to go to the main route right here for history, we can see it does not fire off. Like I said, it's only when you actually navigate through um, the history right there. Okay, so uh, let's have a look now at um, a similar method that is called the replace state method. Okay, so uh, before I do that, I actually just want to show you um, the first uh, the first argument right here. So let's take a look at that real quick. I just want to clean up my history once again. So let's just uh, copy this and start again. Paste inside here. Okay, so. Um, the first argument here to the push state method, um, this, uh, this data essentially is going to allow you to store some sort of information to go along with your states. Okay, so for example, if I was to just pass in null once again and go to the contact page, okay, and then let's try it again. Uh, this time, let's go to the about page and for the first argument here, let's pass through, let's just pass through uh, something like um, let's just do uh, the number of 40, something like that. Now this right here can be anything you want, anything useful to you, you can pass through here to sort of store alongside uh, your navigation to the about um, URL. So if I was to press enter now, we see the exact same thing happens and nothing, uh, nothing much different happens right up here. But um, if I was to now go back to the contact page, Inside the pop state event, we can see here we get this state property right here, and it is currently null. The reason why it is null is because when I pushed the contact root right here, I've set this to be null. If I was to now go forward to the about page, we can see we get states and it is set to 40. Okay, so that is essentially what the state property is right there. You can store arbitrary data, whatever you want inside here that helps your application run. Okay, so with all that being said, uh, let's have a look now at the replace state method. Okay, so the replace state method works in a very similar way to the push state, but it doesn't actually add a new entry to your history. Okay, so for example, right now I'm on the about route. Okay, if I was to uh, say right here, this time doing replace state, it's going to work in the exact same way. It's going to provide those three arguments, but this time I'm going to say right here 15. Then I'm going to say for this one, let's go to the settings page. Okay, 
press enter and we can see right there uh, it is set to settings but this one didn't actually add a new entry right here okay so we no longer have the about root in our history okay it is being replaced with settings if I was to use the um, the push state this one would uh, this one would actually add a new entry here but of course replace state won't add your new entry so now if I was to uh, go back to uh, the previous page contact then go forward to settings this time um, we can see now we also get the state right here to be 15 and that has been updated okay so that is the push state and the replace state method so like I said earlier I'm gonna have a whole video covering uh, creating a single page application using vanilla JavaScript um, and hopefully um, it'll make more sense in that video um, if you're still struggling uh, to understand through this video but Anyway, I want to show you or demonstrate uh, one more thing, and that is um, with the push state and the replace state methods, um, this URL section here, this can only go to um, uh, the same origin as your page. Okay, so I can't say, for example, I can't do HTTPS, I can't do, you know, google.com. It's not going to work because, of course, then I can essentially trick users into thinking that this right here is Google, so that's not good. Therefore, the browser is going to stop. You need to make sure that your URLs um, are going to be, you know, of the same origin as your um, as your page right up here. Okay, so that is the history API in JavaScript. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.